I know many of you have been yearning and wondering when the next Petty Pendergrass production was coming. Well, you have to wait no more because here it is. And I always like to be strategic about which ones I like to talk about because I said that they need to be very interesting enough where it's like a wake up call for the person, but it's comedic on our end. Now, you're looking at this picture right here and you're probably like, who is this? Because usually a lot of times my Petty Pendergrass productions can be about people that are well known. But not in this case, but the story is that good that I could not pass it up. So in this picture, you see a man by the name of Henry Herbert. He's from Florida. Now, this is a story that travels. And what I mean is it went from Florida and ended in Virginia Beach. So he traveled from Florida all the way to Virginia Beach because he had a plan, quote unquote, for his estranged wife meaning a woman that was with him that has now left him. <clears throat> but his plan did not go as planned. Now you're looking at the title. Now you see the words backfire, but usually backfire is one word, but I separated them for a reason. I hope you're understanding where I'm going with this. If not, I will continue. The article reads, Henry Herbig of Florida concocted an elaborate plan to murder his wife. His scheme backfired when he was shot in his spine by his stepdaughter, leaving him paralyzed. According to investigators, Herbig allegedly drove from Florida to his estranged wife's home in Virginia Beach, Virginia, in the front seat of his vehicle, which was, front, which was found in front of the victim's house, was a journal that detailed Herbig's plan. Herbig carried no cell phone to avoid GPS tracking. He used only cash, stayed away from toll roads, and only shopped in small stores so security cameras wouldn't record him. Investigators say Herbig also had with him, among other things, disguises, garbage bags, zip ties, and a large wrench. When he arrived at the house on September 7th, prosecutors say Herbig, in disguise, armed himself with a gun and the wrench. Herbig allegedly attacked his stepdaughter, hitting her in the head with the wrench as she was letting her dog into the yard. He then allegedly gained access to the home and began attacking his wife, who suffered broken bones. That was when Herbig's stepdaughter shot him, severing his spine. He is now permanently paralyzed. WTKR reports that police say the stepdaughter acted in self-defense. So I can only assume that the stepdaughter is the biological daughter of the wife. Herbig attended his bond hearing September 25th via video conference from his hospital bed at the Virginia Beach City Jail. Defense attorneys told the court the jail could not provide adequate medical care for Herbig. Even though Herbig will never walk again, prosecutors argue that he still he was still a flight risk and dangerous to the community. Investigators say Herbig is a man of means with several homes, including one in the Canadian border. He also has connections to the pilots. The judge agreed with the prosecution and denied Herbig bond with the caveat that she would reconsider her decision if there were a plan on where the accused would be taken if he were to be released. Herbig's preliminary hearing is scheduled for December 6th. Murder plots aren't always as complex as Herbig's, but they can go wrong all the time. Well, <coughs> that's what he gets. I can't say that. Uh, I feel bad for him. Kudos to the stepdaughter. And it is weird because it says she got hit in the head with a wrench. So I know she was probably dazed for a little bit while this was actually going on. But he traveled all the way from Florida to Virginia Beach to plot to kill his wife. And he's the one that ends up with the severed spine and can't walk again. And probably is going to have to go to jail for a very long time. They probably thought that he probably thought he was going to get some kind of a sympathy because he was shot in the back and his severed his spine. He's lucky he's still alive, but I bet right now he probably wishes he wasn't. Now you see why I titled the video the way that I did and why this was definitely deserving of a Petty Pin the Grass production. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments and I will talk to you in the next one.